Welcome to a new video. <clears throat> Please excuse my voice, I woke up sick today. Trust is one of the most searched and written about topics when it comes to relationships and that has a good explanation. Many of us have either A, been betrayed in the past, B, have a hard time with low self-esteem that makes us worry we are not good enough to keep our partners loyal, or C, we may be slightly newer to relationships, may have been in long relationships with a small number of people, or there could be some problems stemming from childhood that are behind our trust issues as adults. If you find yourself in a situation where your own self-esteem affects the trust you have in the other person, no matter how much your partner will bend over backwards to win your trust if there isn't enough confidence in yourself their efforts won't work and I can truly speak about that from experience many years ago I dated a nice guy who did everything he could to earn my trust but I, I doubted myself so much and I was so insecure that nothing he could do worked and ultimately he tired out if you are in this situation I will link below two videos I did about self-confidence please watch them and sign up for my email if you haven't already check out the page I link you to from the welcome email and look at the month of February because you'll see there a post I wrote privately just for you with some recommendations that will complement the videos. You'll have to do that work while following the tips today. This video is meant to help build the general foundation of trust. Now I have been cheated on more than once so I know what it takes to rebuild trust, but in my opinion, if you want to be successful and not turn this into something you hear in passing, then you have to do it the right way. And starting with today's tips is, in my opinion, the right thing to do. I will make a video that will add to this and focus on rebuilding trust, but till then, this is the foundation to build on and you can start right away. Please get ready to take down some notes, keep watching and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. As you write down all the things we talk about today, Day. you can afterwards tell your partner that you've done some homework on how to solidify your relationship and then ask your partner if that's something he or she would like to do as well so as I shared these tips with you because we are the ones having this conversation you can present them to your partner as well and explain that these are not only things you will be doing but the things you need him or her to reciprocate in order to build your trust together first tip is to find out what trust means to you and your partner. For me, a verbal or emotional affair weighs just as much as a physical one does. It might not be the same for other people. It might not be the same for you because we are all different. You may not be phased by your partner having lunch with a female colleague, for example, but he may be if you're doing that with a male colleague. In other words, we have to have a clear outline of our boundaries so we don't misplace thoughts and turn things into something that could have been avoided. And that comes from asking the question, what are the things that if I were to do, you would feel uncomfortable with? I didn't think that wearing a piece of jewelry that an ex gave me would be an issue until my now husband and I discussed trust boundaries and he expressed to me that that bothers him. He didn't know that Facebook messaging with an ex from 10 years ago would be an issue for me until I told him it would be. And I wasn't like, I don't want you talking to that girl, but more like trust to me is being in a relationship that's not polluted by the past or the people that were in it. And so if that's all right with you, I'd rather you not communicate with her. Of course, in my case, there were no kids, no businesses, so basically no strings attached. Tip number two is to pay attention to the way you interact with others. I just want to remind you that after watching this video, you can decide which tips you want to share with your partner and ask for those things in return to build trust. Back to tip number two. We learn to trust the other person in large part based on how he or she interacts with other people. And the same thing will go for you. That person will trust you based on how you engage with others. Building trust in a relationship isn't just about how you treat each other, but how you treat other people. I have seen people be flirtatious with others while in the company of their partners. I really think that mostly comes from a need of validation of sorts to show your partner that you're desirable and to remind them of what they're having please don't sabotage the relationship by doing that integrity is crucial and you can show how amazing you are by working hard taking care of the households or doing thoughtful things not by being too touchy-feely or checking out other people agree that that's a no-no in the relationship and you need to show each other mutual respect because trust thrives on that. Tip number three is to remember that it's not only an act of betrayal that can kill trust, it can also be affected by frequent tiny little lies because they add up higher and higher until eventually trust is lost. 
Make it a point to always be truthful with each other. If the bag you got is expensive, don't lie and say it costs less. He may not say anything, but he's not stupid. That will stick. And so will the next little lie and then the next one and so on until the other person will feel like they can't trust you. The consequences of not being completely honest will kill the trust and ruin the relationship. Keeping our promises is also part of the foundation of a trusting relationship. So let your partner know that it's important for you to be able to rely on him and that means he needs to follow through with his promises and same thing goes for you if you say you'll call it eight don't call it nine if he says he'll show up he'll need to show up trust goes both ways so let your partner know that being dependable is something you'll need and be able to offer in return one of the biggest issues I had with my husband in the beginning was that he would say one thing and then do another for example he would say that he likes the color black not verbalizing that it's not actually his favorite color and he could change his mind if he needed to so the next day when he went for white I was so thrown off and in my mind he said one thing and he did another that's of course a blanket description of the issue so I can explain it to you but basically it wasn't until I told him what I need to build my trust in him in this case do what you say not the opposite or at least finish your train of thought out loud so I can understand and not be surprised it wasn't until we established that that things started to change tip number four is to not judge if your partner tells you something personal let's say something they did wrong that moment is critically intimate and that person is opening up to you when that happens don't criticize the other person and don't dismiss your feelings because they'll think twice before trusting you with any big information bite the tongue thank that person for trusting in you express empathy as a just a solution if the problem is open-ended and if that other person is judging you then you need to use a nice statement I say something like I want to trust you with these issues and feel safe confiding in you but honestly right now I feel judged and criticized it's also important to provide an alternative that would have worked for you for example I would feel much better if you would just listen and try to empathize with me you'll be surprised how many people wouldn't know what to do to please you so always provide the alternatives for yourself or ask your partner what they would like you to do to make them feel more comfortable if you notice that the things you're saying or doing aren't exactly getting the response you hope they would. I spoke about the importance of having couples rituals in a past relationship video and today's tip number five is to let him or her plan date night. Trust is not only earned but learned as well. So the more opportunities you give your partner to take action that is supportive of you, the more that will positively impact you. You can guide the other person by telling them what you like, what you don't like and what you hope to experience during your time together and then let that person make the decisions you can start small like date night and grow from there with the bigger decisions also I noticed with myself that whenever I nag I start questioning my partner's capabilities and when that happens trust will start suffering as a result so learning to say what to expect rather than making the other person have to guess is the way to go most couples suffer because they assume the other person will know what they want and they should know how to make you happy that is a terrible approach verbalize what you want give the other person full range to do whatever they see fit to achieve what you want and if they miss the mark tell them the alternative that would have worked for you instead trusting the other person with decision making and verbalizing your expectations will in time absolutely help you learn to trust each other Tip number six is to consistently expand your relationship. Through the good times and the bad ones, you both need to grow and ideally do it as a couple. Do something of substance together. I agree that watching the game on the couch is fun, but there's no growth of any sorts that comes out of that. Physical growth, for example, could be going to the gym together, going for a walk or playing tennis together, or holding each other accountable on your diet and lifestyle choices. That's an option. Mental growth could come from, I don't know, reading the same book in the same time together and then at the end of your week sharing each other's takeaways from it. Learn a new computer program that then you can teach each other or going to a museum together and learning things in the same time. You could do vision boards together. That's another example. Now, there is also something to be said about having a routine and tip number seven is to be predictable. Now, I know this is going to sound a little bit unconventional, but please hear me out. Mixing it up and making things interesting once in a while is 
great, but predictability establishes a very important trust pattern. And we don't have to assume off the bat that routines are boring and they can make a relationship stale because that's not entirely true. Your partner coming directly home from work is predictable. It provides a subconscious comfort. And then what you choose to do with your time together to mix things up is totally up to you. But the reality is that uniformity builds trust. So think about what are some routines you could establish in your relationship and then embrace them. I'll do a quick recap of these tips in a second, but I wanted to let you know that in the email that's going out on Friday, I will share with you some trust building exercises that you can do together to strengthen your trust bond. I'm so excited about that. Please make sure that you are set up to get the email from me and definitely keep an eye out for it this Friday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and connect with me. I'm very very active on social media and you can find me just about everywhere if you search my name. I love you for watching and I hope this helped. Leave me a comment with your suggestions for future videos. May good luck and fortune follow you everywhere you go today and every day and I'll see you again this week in a new video. Thank you for watching!